Welcome to Iris After Hours. Casual conversations with inspirational speakers off the clock. Welcome back to Iris After Hours. I'm your host, Nathan Kotzer, with the beautiful... Crystal and human. Come on. Wow, you never introduced me. Come on, I know. I it's, thought, we're just to well, remind you of who we are. Exactly. I watched the podcast the other day and you introduced me, so I thought, I've got to introduce Crystal and... Thank you. Come on. Here we are. And today, we are really excited because we have got... A really special guest. He is an author. I think five books. Humanitarian. He, yes, he's preached in stadiums. He's stopped for the one on the streets. He is a, business owner. A business, yeah, a, amazing man, and he is like a pure man of God. Like just having lunch with him today, it's been amazing to see into his heart and his walk with the Lord. So, you guys are going to be really interested to meet Gershom. No. Yay. You guys, you are so real. People, I'm telling you, I met a real deal people that are, are not just behind the camera, but they read what they're talking about. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. Oh, Thank, Thank you, you for being Gershom. Here. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's now, really wonderful. Gershom, you are a very busy man, to say the least. Uh, you, your life is full of, of extraordinary things of ministry, of business, of meeting with people, um, some quite famous people um, who we can't mention. Um, and you were born in Zambia. Tell us, how did it all happen from being born in Zambia to coming over here and to being involved in international business and ministry in the United States? You know, it's a, it's a miracle by itself. Um, my whole life has been a miracle. I can't even actually explain my life completely because um, when I was born in Zambia, what I know is uh, uh, my, my dad was a politician, a well-known politician there. Oh. Um, he was involved also in a, in a struggle with uh, Nelson Mandela with the first president, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, who is still alive today. Wow. We just honored him uh, with a doctorate to, for what he did for Africa. He's the only regent alive today who liberated a lot of African nations. Wow. But, but just, just a little bit of background. It was an intense time. It was an intense time, and my nation was also a communist nation because of what was going on. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. Yeah. One of the, the president uh, that I knew very well, he declared Zambia as a Christian nation. Come on. Uh, Dr. Frederick Chiruba, now he's gone to be with the Lord, and uh, his wife, we are very close friends, she... Uh, she was an incredible advisor to me. She made me understand who I was um, because when I started preaching, I started having crowds following because of miracles and signs and wonders. In so, Zambia? In Zambia. That's where you started preaching? In Zambia. But your parents weren't Christian, right? They were not Christians, but now they are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's just amazing to see almost my whole family saved. Um, and for me, that's the greatest testimony uh, than just to go out there in the world to try and save the world. But my own household are not saved. But now I have a testimony that my Jerusalem was impacted. And that's why the Lord was able now to release me. If your families are not saved, don't give up because God has not finished with you yet. He will deliver your family. Wow, come on. Yeah. Now, how old were you? Your father died. How old were you when your father died? My my dad actually was poisoned, and I didn't know that. I, I came to learn about it later on in life. I'm glad I didn't know. I was 12 years old. Oh, um, what were you told? Did he just died of sickness or something? He We thought he just died with a sickness, but we realized it was poisoned for political reasons oh. because Zambia was a young democracy, and uh, there were a lot of leaders that wanted... And my dad, honestly, he wanted to pursue the presidency. So I'm sure that oh. was the issue. Yeah. Um, then I was frustrated. Uh, I was upset with God. But I remember when I was nine years old, um, I had a vision of Jesus Christ. That's what's really kept me going. Wow. Yeah. It's, what happened? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Actually, I had sore throats. Um, I don't know what happened, you know, you could, I couldn't swallow saliva properly. I was having those sore throats, pain. Then I went to sleep 
Then early, in, it should be around 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Then I just saw a man appear to me and uh, I knew he was Jesus. I called him in my, in my uh, local language called Yesu. Yes, I, I knew it was, at nine years old, I couldn't speak English. So I was speaking a local languages, the native languages. I said, Namlo la Yesu, which means I've seen Jesus. Wow. Um, when I saw him, the, what was amazing was I saw him on the cross, but he was talking to me on the cross. Um, I don't know how to describe this. It's a, now I can put it, it was a vision. Of course, Jesus died 2,000 years ago, but he was so real there on the cross and the, the pain in my throat disappeared. The search and curiosity started. I started searching. Who is this Yesu? Wow. I told my grandparents. It's another crazy story why I was with my grandparents. Um, I told my Baba, I said, Baba, and I'm Lola, yes, which means I've seen Jesus. He just loved, I used to have Afro, so he loved in my Afro <laughs> area, like, like that. Okay, he did not, he wasn't a Christian, but it was just so cool to hear his grandson talking about, I've seen Jesus. He never said anything, he was just happy. Then years later, when I was about, I think, when my dad just died, um, I saw people that I call them the Gideon people. They were distributing small Bibles, the oh, New Testament. The Gideon yeah. Bibles, yes. A friend of mine tells me, he said, Yesu is in that Gideon Bible. So everything in me went like, wow. I didn't say anything, but everything in me like jumped because my experience when I was nine years old and I've been looking for this Yesu, so I went and grabbed, actually, the New Testament Bible and ran away. <laughs> no permission, nothing. I just grabbed it and ran away because you I stole the Bible. I oh, stole the Bible. I like Good intention. Stealing God's word. Yeah. I, I like stole it. the Bible. It to be stolen more often. <laughs> so I stole this, the Bible and I was learning. And, and, and people did not chase me. They just said, <laughs> they were waving at me. I was expecting someone and I was ready to... Learn because <laughs> I looked at the guys, most of them they were uh, they couldn't as learn as fast as I could. <laughs> so I went into my room knowing I've stolen something and I've never been I've never been a thief in my life, but I became I just stole a Bible. I became a thief for one, at least for a couple of hours. Then I realized I didn't steal. <laughs> they were for free. They were for free. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know that. You know, they so were meant to be stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went into my room, locked myself. I started reading that Bible like I found a treasure. In English? In English. And I couldn't even understand what I was reading about. So I ended wow. up buying bunches of dictionaries. <gasps> so I had... Uh, uh, I had I had uh, Nelson dictionaries, cyclopedia. I had all kinds of things. Everything I started reading, like it talks about the city, Nineveh. Where is Nineveh? Of course, it was a New Testament. Where is Nazareth? I would look at that because I was so curious. Yes, especially when when it came to names, begot this, what does this mean or what? I started reading it. I did not understand everything, honestly speaking, but something happened to me. When I read Mark chapter 16, verse 11, it says, you shall lay hands on the sick and you shall recover and you, you will tramp on the cobra, the cobra one, because there are a lot of cobras. Yes. I used to live at a farm. So I'd face cobras face to face before. Wow. And then the only way to let the cobra go, you need to stand stiff. You can't shake, it will bite you. And, and I've practiced that. At one time I was coming from school, the cobra shows up, it lifts its head. I just went like this until it goes down and leaves. So, and we knew that the cobra could spit in your eyes and you can get brind. Unless there's a woman who is breast, 
breastfeeding. Ah. They, they, can, they can put milk on your eyes. Now I'm giving you a recipe. Wow. Yes. yes. Yeah. Good a, piece of information. Yeah. So oh, woman, yeah. Breast milk is like amazing. Yeah. So you can, for the human being though, <laughs> you just put it there, then it to, it to neutralize all the poison and you won't be blind. So if there's yes. no woman who is bre- breastfeeding, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So that was the only way. But it didn't spit in my eyes. Praise God. I stood st- stiff and it went. Most African kids were like that. We knew how to under a snake. Yeah. And I knew how to kill a snake. So once it falls, it, it gives me a distance. Now I can get to the stone and kill it. Yes. yes. Before that, nothing, no action. Otherwise, it will bite you. So when the Bible talked about a tr- uh, to trample cobras... I said, no, this is not true. You knew what that meant. Yes, yeah. because... I, Most people are like, cool. <laughs> I've never seen a cobra. Yeah, you know, they don't know. I've never seen, but I saw cobra and I've seen cobra bite chicken and they would die. I've seen them bite dogs and dogs would die. So I have experienced it. I know friends were bitten by a cobra. Uh, some of them were imputed and some of them, oh. they got oh. brined. If, if, because if a cobra bites you here, you need to to tie you need to find something very tight yes so that the blood doesn't you know and 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 if there's no hospital you need to use uh charcoal oh. you know the charcoal yes the charcoal thing you need to cut it and then you put the charcoal uh ashes on it yes that wow. that sucks the the uh-huh. poison. I'm poison. giving you now. That's a lot of education. Yes. Come on. So, so that's how you 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 get cured about that. Yes. Otherwise, if there's no charcoal, there's no way the poison can be removed out of your system. Wow. You, you, your hand needs to be imputed, or, yeah, because to get all beaten up, it will turn into black. Then you're gone. But here in America, you can go to the hospital. They can put IV and they pull that out yes but yes in most cases in africa <coughs> so with this information now that jesus said i can trump on cobra i said no ways <laughs> i paused my reading on my bible i was thinking about that then i went to school my friend was seated next to me he said teacher teacher my eyes can't see properly there the the i'm in pain so he was crying because he couldn't see properly the eyes. Those days, there wasn't uh, there wasn't uh, medication now that we we have now in Africa where you can just put a little liquid and your eyes are cleared. There used to be eyes problems and 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 you know most people had problems eyes yes. because they didn't have eye doctors. So the teacher was saying he can't see. Uh, sorry, my my friend was saying he can't see. He's in pain, serious pain. He wants to go home. Then I read that scripture that says, "You shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover." And I remember in Nelson Dictionary trying to find the meaning it says placing your hand. So that's what I did. I placed my hands on. Him like this. And you know what happened? Teacher, teacher, I don't want to go home. I'm fine. Then I went like... Wow. I didn't say anything. I went like... I was just so amazed. How old were you? This is when you were 12? I was 13 years old. Wow. That changed everything. You were 18. Pardon? You were 18? 13. 13. Okay, yeah. I thought you were younger. That changed everything... I wasn't understanding English. That's why I was reading all these dictionaries to try. And uh, sometimes I would ask my brother, my cousin, actually, he, he used, used to study at Cambridge uh, correspondence. So I, I used to ask him, I said, what does this word mean? Uh, you tell me what it means. Then he didn't know I was asking Bible questions because there was no one who was, who knew, who was a Christian. Who was a Christian. Wow. When this guy got healed made me as a young boy believe in the Bible 100%. I remember every fiber of my being saying, I believe in this word. I will stand on it. 
I believe, I believe it with all my heart. From that very moment, the Bible changed the way I read it. And I had supernatural understanding of the word. Now I didn't need dictionary. Seriously, I would know what it means. Wow. Wow. Then I started sharing personal stories with my friends and my friends started getting saved. I didn't even know the word saved. <laughs> Parents would say, oh, my son just got born again. I said, what does it mean to be born again? <laughs> they said, no, you made them Christian. I said, already? Oh, okay. <laughs> so they were getting saved. And then I started telling them if something is wrong with them. I remember this guy. I meet him in the morning around 8 a.m. We are, we are about to go into the classroom. I said, don't quarrel with your parents. The Bible says, respect your parents. Why were you quarreling with your parents this morning? Because I, I knew I had that picture. Wow. Then he says, did my mom call you? I said, no. <laughs> I, and I told a lot of people what was going on in their lives. I just knew they were all saying, what's going on here? Wow. I didn't even know it was a word of knowledge. Now I understand. We see we see it now in our meetings. It happens. Now I, yes. I understand. But before I didn't know that. And uh, and what happened is that the what, were your, what was your family thinking when this was going on? My sister. Yeah. She knows this story, you know. I love her so much. My sister. Be- this is before she went to live with the Queen. Yeah. Oh, my sister works with the Queen Elizabeth. She's a diplomat to England. Oh. Patricia Sicala. Yeah. So my sister. She was so worried. She did that out of love. She said, "Please stop reading the Bible." She started giving me other books. They are novels that you need to know. You need to know. Get life. Read some books. Go some parties. My sister Stop said, making trouble. My sister said, go and party. Go and do something. Go and find some girls. Get busy. Because literally, I did not go out. I was in my room from school. It's my Bible. Wow. I wasn't studying. This to is be- in high school. So that's, this is in high school. That's not normal. That was not normal. <laughs> no. I didn't have, I mean, I used to play soccer. I even stopped going for soccer practice because I had to choose between going to read my Bible, then plus my homework and others. So I spent hours. My sister said, Gershom, I really love you, but I don't want you to just waste your life. I'm told when you read the Bible, you get crazy. So wow. I don't want you to get crazy. And that... Gosh, how much is that the antithesis of the truth? That really... That really affected me. Sometimes I was afraid to read it because I, I didn't want to get crazy. But I can't deny the experience. And yes. I can't deny the vision of Jesus. Like when Jesus appeared to me, all my sore throat pain disappeared. I can't deny all those things. But I didn't share to them. I didn't know if they would believe me. Wow. But God is so powerful. One time, now I was maybe 16, 17, 16 I went, uh, my sister started, uh, she was the head of uh, a minister of foreign affairs. She was the head, so she she was given a house somewhere uh, for her work. And she had a friend who was a workman, she was spending a weekend in her house, and she was in terrible pain. Guess what my sister said? Call Gershom. Call Gershom. No way. So I prayed for my sister's friend she got healed instantly <laughs> and that built trust between me and my sister even today we are the closest i mean i i, I even bought a, a bible to to put it in our office where the queen visits wow is is your sister walking in the truth with my, God? she's saved she's she's awesome. she's saved all my family is saved i've read my sister to the lord though five times <laughs> I wanted to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> to make you sure. need to make sure when it's your family. Yeah, exactly. but that it sticks. But my sister, she's the sweetest person I ever met. But she loves Jesus, and and she 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 believes in what I do. Wow. Um, and you know, being a woman and she's working, she's a head there, uh, a diplomat. 
she's not she's not just a diplomat of just in England, but she's also a diplomat with other European nation. She's oh. she's the, like one of the top diplomat. Wow, that's awesome. and she's a woman. Sometimes she calls me and I advise her to just give God the glory and just honor everybody. So she trusts me. That's great. You know, it's it's just amazing. Um, I can tell you stories. Then at school, things changed. I would enter into the classroom. Students, my fellow students would scream and say, we can feel the power, kinetic energy. Whoa. Whoa, a lot of God's power around y- you. Yes, God's power. I didn't know that. They told me, we know when Gershom is not in the classroom. Wow. When I was growing up, I wasn't as much vocal as I am because mm-hmm. um, I wasn't good at pronouncing things in English. Right. So most of the time I kept quiet. Right. So, but I carried the presence. I didn't know that. Uh, I remember, I remember one time I went late at, in the classroom and people said, you see, this is what I was telling you. Can you feel this energy when it comes in? I didn't know it was the presence of the Lord. One time when I was uh, doing my 11th grade, I will never forget this one. I went to the boarding school. You know why I went? Oh, yes. You know why I went to the In boarding, Zambia? In Zambia. You know why I went to the boarding school? No. Because the school I was going to, I started the fellowship teaching people about... The, the Bible. The Bible. And I had the biggest fellowship. No affiliation, nothing. It didn't even have a name. So now... I had the biggest following of any, there was, there was a quiz club, there was basketball club. Now there was just this club that I didn't have a name. It, it, I used to meet people and people Jesus would come. Jesus club. <laughs> Jesus is club. So the teachers, they didn't know what to do with me because I had so much favor with the entire school. All wow. the students were saying he's a good guy. I was healed. I was touched. My life is much more better. I didn't know those languages. Now I decided to have a meeting on Wednesday because I, it was my day off. The, my timetable was off. So I said, well, I'm off. Today's my off day. Uh, in terms of study time, you know, the schedules. They, in Zambia, they call them periods. Where... Maybe it's your PE time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or, or you, you can do whatever you want. You can go for, to the basketball or to the soccer game or you can go to the quiz club, whatever. But me, I started my own like Bible study that day. I said, it's better I share the word of God. It ended up growing up to 300. <laughs> then, then we ended up becoming even bigger than that. And that time, nothing I didn't know much about the Bible, but I had so much faith. Wow. I remember I didn't understand why people were wearing glasses. Those who couldn't see properly, you know? Yes. They were wearing glasses. I would get the glasses out and throw them and say, you are healed. You are healed. You are healed. (laughs) And they were all getting healed. (laughs) Wow. Just faith. God can do that. (laughs) Boom. Yes. Whoa. So did this school end up getting rid of you or what happened? When 2,000 students gathered, that's where the program started. Oh. 2,000 students. It was getting out of hand. Almost the whole entire school. God's getting out of hand. <laughs> oh I didn't gosh. even know about it. And you know what? I didn't even know what to teach. You know what used to happen is I would... So you all these 2,000 people, I don't know what to say. That's I would amazing. dream what I'm going to speak every time wow. I saw something in the dream, what I'm going to speak. I even knew. Whoa. So when I go home, I, I, would, I would go into the sleep. I would find myself preaching, you know, in the dream. In the dream, yeah. And wow. I would know what I'm preaching. Then I would go into my Bible and prepare a message like that. That's how I prepared my messages. <laughs> I dreamt. So if I didn't have a dream, that is so cool. I did not preach. So yeah. I, it happened like for many years. It's I dreamt. Gosh. Is it not wonderful to just do that? Yeah. I dreamt, then I preached. Wow. I dreamt, then That's I awesome. preached. So. Gosh, that's incredible. Um, I dreamt that I'll be transferred to another school. 
Then I read a book by John Maxwell. Oh, yes, the leadership guy. Re 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 leadership. That book saved that fellowship. It still exists today. Oh, no way. It says a good leader raises up other leaders. Because I, I, I didn't put myself as a leader. I mean, I was... Loving everybody, then teach the word of God, then tell people, especially miracles and healings. People are limping. I, would, I didn't pray for them. I remember. I only started praying for the sick when I went to Bible school. <laughs> but they would get healed without praying for it. I didn't pray for anybody at that time. I just told them you are healed. And they would get healed. Sometimes I just taught the people, like... It's, if he's limping, I said, just throw those away. You walk and people throw it away and they're walking. <laughs> you didn't even know how to pray for the sick. I, did, I didn't know how to pray for the sick. <laughs> you just imparted it. Because in the Bible, there was no scripture that says you pray for the sick. The Bible no. says Jesus healed the sick. Yeah, exactly. So that's exactly what I, my style. So when I went to the Bible school, it really messed me up a little bit. I started seeing less miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly speaking, now I'm seeing more miracles because 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 I, I prayed. You were already in Bible school. You're in like Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus school. Yes, in Zambia. Yes. So, Gosh. So it was like I didn't even know these things. Say, so let let me pray for you when you're sick. I want you to get healed. There was this guy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so amazing. There's this guy. He said, Gosh, I'm very sick. Then I said, You are healed. God bless you. And the person said, oh, something left me. And this happened like every day. It was a lifestyle. I didn't even know. Remember, I didn't know this is what happens in Christianity. Wow. I didn't know. Now, I dreamt that I would be transferred into another school. And in that dream, I was crying. Lord, why? Then I woke up like that. Then I knew I needed to prepare for the new leadership. For the first time, I gave people leadership. I said, you will take over my position. You will you will be his assistant. According to John Maxwell, yep. I followed those one. I put a leadership and it was just one week. I just, my sister, Patricia said, uh, I know you're not going to like this. Uh, we found a very nice school for you. You're going to love it. <laughs> Then I said, I knew I'm, I'm going to another school, right? But why? He says, you know what? The reports at school is that you have turned the whole entire school to Jesus, to this Christianity. So the teachers don't know what to do. It's like you have more authority than the teachers, than the principal. I didn't know that. They didn't talk to me. Wow. Yes. Because when I called for a, mir for a meeting... They all showed up. And, and, and they thought it was more important than going to classes than to come. I didn't tell them to do that. Wow. So I got transfer, transferred into another school far away, 2,000, 1,000 miles away. Oh, my gosh. One in, in Zambia? In so, Zambia. Oh, now, Zambia's a big country then. It's a big country. It's, <clears throat> it's about two times... Texas. Oh my gosh, two but, times Texas. Yeah, and we are. Because Texas is the biggest state in the lower 48 here. Yeah, and we are only 15 million. Wow. Texas is 50. So La Zambia has got a lot of land. Yes. Uh, so you went to boarding school away from your family? Away from my friends, my family. How old were you at this stage? I was 17, 17, 18, 17. 17. I finished school late. I finished school. Uh, when I was 20, actually. Right. It was normal in Africa for people to finish school late. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's so, I was so sad, but I appointed the leadership. So good. And the meeting continues to go. Wow. Did you start seeing the same things at your new school? Or was it no, different? No, I was, I was frustrated. Yeah. I was really in frustration. Actually, I told God I'm not going to do the same thing that I did in that school. So when I went to that school, I did not tell people I'm a Christian. But a miracle happened when I moved to that new school. Uh, a friend of mine, I can mention her name. Her name is Moatita. Moatita, she became the first female friend that I've ever had. 
just like friends. Yes. So she, we were doing, I, I was teaching her math and she was teaching me other. So we were like stud mate. We were just good friends. I mean, she did everything. She she carried food in. We ate together. We we went to the games together. She was just fun to be with. So one day, Matira got sick, and uh, um, Esther Gradis um, said, "Matita is sick." Then I said, Lord, I'm not preaching, but I'm, I'm still praying, you know. I just, I told God, I said, I'm not going to preach, but I still love you. I'm still <laughs> loving you. I'm still, but I'm not preaching. Then uh, that day I opened my Bible, found the, the way it says the handkerchiefs, Paul used an handkerchief. Yes. So I got a piece of an handkerchief. I said to Gradis, go and put this on Matita's bed and she'll be healed. So Gradis was not a Christian. Matita was also not a Christian. They are Christians now. They're going to watch this podcast. They Come follow. on. Oh, Hi. Hi. Hi, Gladys. Hi, Hi Matita. <laughs> yes. So awesome. Gradis pressed the, the piece of cloth on, on the pillow. And what happened is, Gradis, uh, Matita got healed. She said, oh, I'm fine. I felt like just something leave me. I'm fine now. She was sleeping. She had malaria. Now suddenly she's fine. Gosh. And Gradis says, that piece of cloth did something. And I said, yeah. I didn't say anything. I still didn't say I'm a Christian. <laughs> then Matita, because we became very good friends, she invited me to go and attend to Mass, like the priest was giving. Oh, yeah, the Catholic Church. Yeah. So that was the first time in that in that school to go to church. Yes. So I went to the Mass, and and the priest preached. He shared usually good stories. Then uh, uh, he, he, Matita said, you are not a Christian. You need to be a, a Catholic right now. You need to convert yourself to Catholic. So otherwise you're not going to take a Eucharist. You might die if you do that. That's a, that's a blood of Jesus. So, so I quickly did like this. I said, am I fine now? <laughs> Martina said, I think you should be okay. Because I really wanted, I really wanted to take those <laughs> Eucharist. Yes, the Holy Communion. I know. Yes. I had the same thing when I was a kid. I was always wanted because I wasn't allowed to take it till I was 12 mm -hmm. in the Lutheran church. But I always thought, I, like, I can't wait till I can... Take the Holy Communion. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's good. So I was like, I can't wait. So she didn't know you were a Christian no. still. She knew I, I had uh, a good energy and she knew that I was a good guy. And that she got healed. And she got healed. <laughs> yeah. Which she, she didn't have an explanation. I didn't have an explanation. I didn't. I knew it was the Lord Jesus Christ who healed because I'd already first seen these miracles, but I've never shared. It. Yes, yes. But Gradis was curious about it. Gradis was saying, something happened. That's amazing. Actually, Gradis wrote me on Facebook one day and said, you are amazing. You remember when you, when you gave me the, the, that piece of cloth? She reminded me. They are now, most of them, Matita is married. Gradis is married. A lot of them now, they are married. Yeah, it's just amazing. Um, so what happened is, after I took that, the priest liked me. He said, you are special. Then I said, oh, um, I, never, I never tested alcohol in my life, but that was my first time to test alcohol. Oh, the Eucharist, <laughs> yes, because it's real alcohol. Yes. The blood of Jesus is so, the real fortified wine. Yeah. Same but, as the Lutheran Church. Yes, you know, it's not really a sin, but it, it was offensive because that's not the way... I, you know, I was learning away from alcohol in my family. Exactly, yeah, because your family had had trouble with alcohol. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I, I was like, I got so upset after I tested that. Oh, my goodness. I that got so, so upset. So I told Matita, I said, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Matita, I'm not going to go there. I, I, really, I really love you. You are my best friend. I would do anything, but please, I don't want to. Matita said, please, let's go to church again. So what is I was so upset that day. 
I saw people singing in the next room somewhere. Then I said, it feels like the group, similar group I had. Let me just go in there. So I went there. This lady started praying for me. I was like, you know, you know, when you're upset with God, I was, she was praying for me. I couldn't close my eyes. I was like this, uh, you know, like this. They were thinking I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a good person or some kind. So they yes. prayed for me, but I felt something. Then, uh, then, then, then Gradis, uh, there's another Gradis. I said, Gradis, I know what you have. Then I started weeping. I said, but I can't go back in this. That's why I got transported. It transferred. I can't. So I, I wept that day. And Gradis, another Gradis, there were two Gradis. Yes. Wiped my tears. I said, it's okay. It's okay. I didn't tell me. Can you tell me what it is? He says, I just miss this, but I don't want to preach or anything. Then Grady said, can you come on a, on a Wednesday night again, please? So I went in a Wednesday night. Before that, I had a dream that I am to take over that group. So I dreamt that I, I'll become the leader of that group. And I said, no, God, I don't want to become a leader of that group. <laughs> so when I was there, they were voting for leaders because Gradis was now going into grade 12 and is going to concentrate on her exams and then she's going to leave. It, it, it was called like a courage kind of a group. It was yes. like legally re registered. Finally, something, something was going on. Yes. Mm. So I was seated on the back. I didn't say anything, but I was thinking about my dream about taking over the group. And there were like just 15 people. Then somebody said, I really had a, a, a vision, you know, some people. I didn't know about vision stuff, even if I operated in it, but I didn't know. I said, I had a vision that God is going to send somebody from the capital city and is going to become the leader here. Then, then I said, oh, this is Gershom. He's new. He's from the capital city of Rusaka, Zambia. Uh, he, 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 he just, I just invited him to come. Uh, he's not really a Christian. He's just, then somebody said, why, let's put him to be a leader. He's a good man. Then I said, like, I don't want, they said, no, let's vote. Everyone voted me in. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> so I became a leader now. I didn't like it. Oh, my no. goodness. But you knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. And it was your first time there? That was my first time there. They didn't even know me. That's so funny. There were other incredible, powerful people that you could admire. Mia was like just hanging out with two girls. <laughs> who, two girls. Who were drinking, and, but they were fun. <laughs> they were partying, those girls, but they were so much fun. Yes. You know, they, they would go for parties. Mia would go for studies. I yes. was, and I was still reading my Bible because yes. I really believed in it. Yes. So when they say, oh, let's go out. And I said, no, you guys, you can go. But during our free time, we really, we were really friends. And I think they liked me because I was so honoring to them. Yes. And, and they, they were just surprised. This guy doesn't do anything bad to us. And he has been a good friend, you know. So we became, they were really loyal to me. Wow. So now... I'm getting a new position and I don't want it. So they were still around. I was still not functioning in it. They were still doing everything, but I was still on the back. One day, that changed my life. This changed me. They, we were having Catholic interdenominational meeting. The priest, the Catholics, they were holding something for the whole entire school because it was Patrick uh, supported by the Catholic, right. the, the school. So uh, this was amazing. The priest, that girl who prayed for me, that I felt something, she told the priest, said, can you tell Gershom to open up in the word of prayer? And there was about 2,500 students who gathered, it was compulsory. It was all the whole entire school. It, wow. it, it was in assemblies. But I didn't want to pray. I felt unworthy, you know. The priest said, 
my son, you know, that's how the priest they call it. In, yes. My son, mm -hmm. you need to listen to me. He is the mic. Pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You'll be fine. Gladys, your friend, said you can pray. I said, no, no, no. Then, he, Because he was a priest, but he was also a teacher. Yes. So I needed to respect him. Of he had, course. He was some kind of authority at school, very respected. So I got the mic. I, I started weeping. Lord, forgive me that I have not preached the gospel. Woe to me who do not preach the gospel. But I ask that you do something here. The presence of the Holy Spirit Whoa. filled the whole entire room. Wow. And demons started manifesting. There was over 500 people manifesting demons. Wow. That's intense. That was it. The most, it changed me. It what? made me holy again. Oh, what a moment. <laughs> wow. The, 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 my, the respected priest that I loved so much, he loved me. He picks up the Bible. He starts hitting people with demons. He recognized those evil spirits. He started hitting people? With the Bible said, please go, please go. They were not living. He was hitting them with the Bible. Please go, please go. He was hitting them with the Bible. So huh. then... Did you know what to do? Huh? Or what did you do then? I knew what to do because I experienced that before. You had, okay. I yes. had one time experience... And the Lord showed me in the dream wow. that when I face things like this, I shouldn't allow them to talk to me. I should walk in all authority and command them. That was the instruction from the, my dream. <laughs> That's a good dream. Everything that comes to you in dreams. It's That's so a great, great dream. Yeah, so, so Come on. Yeah, it's just amazing. So I followed the instruction of the dreams. I said, I picked up the mic. I said, everybody quiet. The demons are good and people are walling on the floor. It was scary. I've never seen it on that level. Wow. Then I told the priest, I said, I know what it is and I know what to do. He says, okay. He was still beating people at the Bibles. It was good. And that was my first time. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whoa. I command you devils to go. Wow. So, but what was funny is that the devils would come out of the people and they would go into another person. So they were like, they would no come out. Way. I've never seen this. They would come out of the, another person and enter another person and then enter another. So you can be free, but they enter into another person. So the process took almost all night. <laughs> then I didn't know what to do. I cried to God. I said, God, I know I've not preached the gospel. I know I've not fasted. I'm not prepared. I'm not all that. But please, Lord. Then the Lord started showing me visions. This is crazy. While you're at the meeting, he started showing you visions. What is all this is happening? I became scared because can you imagine you cast out a devil and then it enters oh. another person. Oh. You cast out from that person. Oh, enters. Yeah, that, yeah. I've had some experience with that. And it, that is very yeah freaky. <laughs> For it sure. scared me, Absolutely. so I cried to the Lord. I said, I've not fasted. I'm not prepared on these things and all that. But he helped me. Then the Lord starts giving me a word of knowledge and visions. Over each person? Yes, he says, when you cast out the devils, cast them one by one and direct these devils to go somewhere else. So I cast it out to this girl. I said, the demons came from your grandmother. He killed chickens and blood. That's where the entrance point. Well, the occult. So, yeah. so the Lord started showing me all this. She said, yeah, it's true. My grandmother used to kill chickens and sacrifice it to spirit. I said, yeah, that's what happened. So just, just, just say no to that. So she would say no. Then they would leave. Then I would say, I command you to, to, to go to hell. <laughs> then they, they would leave. And, and all devils were casted out of that place. That was a change of my life. I automatically became a man of God. Wow. I started fasting. I started praying because everybody was talking about what happened. Everyone was looking at me with respect. I didn't have a choice. Yes. So it's wow. automatically, I came back like I was back. I started yes. praying like a madman. Wow. I was started spending hours and hours in prayer. I found this big fig tree. 
it was Eden, a fig tree, but I didn't know that it was the same fig tree that that actually people were going to smoke marijuana on. There was, you know, the guys at school, yes. the naughty guys, yes. they used to go and do drugs on that same tree. But it was so cool, hidden place. There was like a little path. I don't know how I discovered it. And I wanted to go and help myself. Then that's how I discovered the place. Like, oh, this is a cool place. And then uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to pee on this place. No, no, it's so good. I'll be coming here for prayers. <laughs> so you were going there to pray. Other guys were going there to smoke, smoke marijuana. Right. Yes. Same tree. S- same as American and Australian sc- yeah. schools at the time, I'm sure. Yeah, so I wow. So I went there. It, there was nice stones there, but it was nice. It was all cleared, but it was looking like it was a bush tree. Right. You mean like a... Like you, know, it's, you, know, you know how the figs do like this? Yes. It was like... Then there was just a little entrance. When you enter, it's all nice inside. Oh, look at this them. guy's cleaned it up was just for smoking. <laughs> so for me, I said, this is my place for it's prayer. For, oh. So I started spending hours, my free time, into that place. In that tree. And then one guy followed me to say, oh, we, we, let's go and smoke with him. He's going to smoke. Then the light. Oh, I can know what's going to happen now. I didn't know this. My clothes changed into white. They shone. They were shining into a bright light. Whoa. And the guy leaned away like he had seen a ghost. Told everyone, oh no, I've seen this. He told all the students. Oh, you know, students can talk. One spread can go all over. They're good preachers of the gospel. Yes. So the whole school started asking me about my clothes turning into this glorious light. Did you, were you aware that that happened? No, I didn't know. But I felt the presence. Yes. I felt the sweetness of God's presence. Yes. But I didn't know that you, this is what was going on. Yes. So when, when he told me, I said, Wow. Then I said, Lord, where is it in the Bible? I realized when Jesus was praying, his clothes turned like a white linen and the light shone up. So I showed this guy. He says, that's exactly what happened to you. And the guy got saved. Whoa. And and he became part of my group. Now my group, I was very effective now. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they started coming to know the Lord. All other religions, they started knowing the Lord. Satanists started coming to know the Lord. That was all different levels. I don't know if I can go into that. There were all people started yes. getting, getting to know the Lord. Wow. So there was like a awakening. Then I challenged the school to start a day of prayer for the whole entire school. They said, no, we don't do that. We're a government school. We're a secular school. I said, no, we got to do this. Come on, Kesha. So, woohoo! So, prayer was introduced at school for the first time. Before, it's me who was praying for everyone at assemblies, but I started saying, no, it's not me. I want that one to pray. I want everyone to pray. So, so, every time we had a gathering, everybody expected me to pray because they started looking up to me. Now I said, no, I'm not going to pray. I want this to continue. I want the, somebody in the ninth grade to pray, in yes. the tenth grade to pray, and all that. So, even when I missed the assemblies, I'm not there. People still prayed. Yes. So it, it became now wow. a tradition. As a, even now, I'm told this, the prayer still continued because it's like a tradition. Yes. They don't know who started it. But what happened is that my group. A, a year later or so, they're all, the, the great 12s, they all graduated. Uh-huh. So I only remained myself. <clears throat> that group wasn't existing, it was just me. So the other guy who had seen the light, yes, he became my first member. So we were just two of us meeting. <laughs> so I was saying, God, who could meet in my room? The Lord said, no, go and meet there. At the tree. No, no, no. At the tree, I was still doing it. Oh, yeah, no, but, but this in, is at the Wednesday in night. In the classroom, in yeah. the conference room. Yes. I said, God, it doesn't make sense. And we met with this guy. We tried to tell everybody to come off. Then no one showed up. Then I had a vision now. I had a dream. Come on. 
Another dream. I had another dream. We're being led by the Spirit here. We are being led by the Spirit. I know no one's discipling you or mentoring you or teaching you at this point. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have... That's what's so crazy. This is all... Now I have your mom as my mentor. (laughs) And, and, you know, Heidi helps me and Mel Toro and Rafa Wilkerson. These people do help me, you know. And uh, And later you went to Bible school. But this is all before you... Before I went to Bible school, teaching, I wasn't part of any Bible class or anything. Wow. The only thing that helped me was dreams. So if I had no dream, no answer. (laughs) That's good. So so tell us about this vision. What was the vision? The vision was I found myself wanting too much the crowd. Yes, right. I want people to come like the way it was in another school where yes. I had a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But the Lord was not there. Right. Then I found myself with just few people. The presence and the Lord Jesus Christ was there. So then I had in my mind, not verbally, but when, when, when you have a vision of the Lord, you don't talk with your lips. You talk with your spirit. You may um. think you're talking with your mouth, but you're not really talking, I don't know how to explain it. When the Lord appears to you, you don't need to open your lips. Automatically, you have a communication, though Whoa. Though you are talking in the natural, like the yes. same way you could, I'm talking wow. to you and Crystal and wow. I can talk to uh, Elisha and the other man with my mouth open. You may think you're opening your mouth, but you're just like this. But you can feel like you're talking. Mm-hmm. But there is no mouth opening, but there was that communication. So the Lord was talking to me in my spirit and I would respond back and we were just talking like that. That was like something else. He says, do you want the crowd of people without me? I can give it to you. Or do you want my presence? Mm. Whoa. Do you want my presence? Then I realized, I said, oh my gosh, what 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 a moment. What has really made me happy is the presence of the Lord. I don't care about the crowds. I cared it that time i wanted the classroom to be full i wanted you know to have like, the movement that i mm, had mm. you know at, at first because i did not think about the crowds i was just focused on no, what the lord told me that wasn't your original intention then no. but now my origin my intention was i wanted more people mm-hmm. mm. then the more i wanted more people no one showed up yes but before i was just obeying the lord yeah so yeah. now I'm at frustrated with one person, stranded with this guy, that I would go for a meal together, then would meet again for Bible study, which I was appointed as a leader, and I had that dream, but there was no one else. No matter how I tried, I begged people, can you come? No, we can't come. Can you come? Oh, we're going to come next week. They never showed that up. It's so ironic, isn't it? You were trying so hard. <laughs> I, I tried so hard, Christoran. I tried. I even wrote things in the pen, like, we have a meeting here, please come. I stuck on the board. <laughs> no one showed up. <laughs> but people said great things about me, but they didn't want to come to my meetings. Yes. Now, I was frustrated in that time. Then when they, then I had that vision, there was like five, six people. We were praying, and the Lord Jesus Christ was there, and the presence of the Lord was so strong. Then... Then from that dream, I dreamt out there was masses of people, but the presence was not there. So the Lord told me, do you want this or do you want this? Then I went, Lord, I want your presence. Then I woke up. Immediately, I started seeking the presence of Jesus more than the crowd. Then people came. Then within one week, we had 90 people. Wow. Within one week, 90 people. And we didn't even try anything. I was just crying out to see the face of Jesus. Crying out for his presence and telling him how much I love you, Lord. I need you more than anything. Mm -hmm. Once my inside started crying out for the presence, then people started coming and started experiencing the presence of the Lord. And we became again the largest group. And that's why all my life, I always say what really matters is the presence of God. And I've, I've come to treasure the presence of the Lord. It, if, even, even sometimes when I'm invited to speak to masses, 
I always say, Lord, I want you to be there. I don't want to make that mistake I made where I want masses rather than your presence. Yes. So I'm always cautious of that. Wow. So that's, that's, that's like what started happening. And then when I got graduated, something happened. Uh, a miracle happened. I was invited to speak in one meeting for the first time. And it was advertised on radio. It was packed. You know, you, you have been to Africa, you know, sometimes churches don't have proper windows. You know what I mean? Those, yes, it's the... You know, just picture those. I was preaching in a very poor area. So the place was small, could only occupy maybe 100 people, but maybe 500 people showed up. Then when I was speaking for the first time, being advertised on radio in Zambia, and I was speaking, people were falling under the power of God outside. I didn't even know how to handle it. Whoa. People came, whispered, said, Gershom, do you know that people are falling outside? People are passing. They are falling. These are non-Christians. They're falling. That was like amazing. And that was the beginning of the journey. Wow. And now... Did you know then that that was going to be your life? Like full-time I, ministry, preaching... Honestly, I didn't know. I thought I'm going to be a politician. And I thought I'm going to be a businessman. Like your parents. Like my parents. <clears throat> I, I didn't know. But one time, I started praying more. Yeah, I'm telling you, what, I can tell you what made me start praying more. It's when I watched a movie, Ten Commandments. Oh, then Moses was going to the, the mountain. Yes. So I started going to the mountain as well. <laughs> <laughs> the so, tree and the mountain. So when you say praying more, what do you mean? How long were you praying? <clears throat> oh my God, sometimes eight hours. Wow. Actually, sometimes... You talked today about how much you love to pray. So that's been a theme for you for years. Now, for years. And this has not been like a schedule. Like, no. for example, yesterday, the presence of the Lord came into my room. Uh, I was like electrocuted with God's presence and God's love up to like 4 a.m. this morning. Wow. Then I only slept from 5 to 10. Then I said, okay, I needed to get prepared. Actually, when you sent me a text, I was just getting dressed <laughs> because... The, the, it comes a time when the presence of the Lord is so real that your body is even in a, expense, a suspense. There are times, there was a time, uh, Nathan and Chris ran, that I, I could pray all night by myself. Wow. No church service, nothing, no music. I would go into the church like 6 p.m. with a meritory sleeping bag. Yep. I would go there thinking I'm going to sleep. I would pray all night long. I would, I would, it wasn't like a normal prayer. It was a place where I could even have visions and I would pray. And I would pray for things about the nations. And I would hear them on the news. No way. I would pray for things about the country. And I would hear them in the news. One time I was in prayer. I knew that the country would be... The soldiers would try and take over the nation. And I, I went to this group that I joined. I told them, I said, we need to pray that the soldiers shouldn't take over Zambia. They said, no, this country is peaceful. Then I said, please, I saw it in my prayer. Let's pray. A few other people said, he's just a kid. But I still went ahead and prayed. Because for me, if, if there's something you know about, know, know about me, if God has spoken, I obey that more than man. Wow, that is, Be because that been, is so... Because that's I've, exactly what Heidi is like. Heidi is the same. So it's... Uh, I've lost friends like that. Then afterwards, they tell me, he said, you are right. Wow. Because he's because the only one I have. When, I, when he speaks to me, really, I have, no, I have a fear to be a, not to obey. I'm not afraid to disappoint man. I'm afraid to disappoint him because I... I know his power. Mm -hmm. I know his power is so real. I know his power that Whoa. 
One mm. time when the car ran on me and the angel picked up the car and I was not lying on it. People came and surrounded to try to think I'm hurt. I didn't feel anything because an angel had picked up the car. You know, this type of experiences changes you. Wow. Because it's one thing for me to dream and see, but it's another thing to experience it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So with these experiences, they've made me trust the voice of the Lord more. Wow. So it's, uh, it's, 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 you know, the Lord started speaking to me a lot and, and actually uh, I shared with a big church they ended up actually becoming my mentors for the first time I found people to talk to in Zambia yes there's this man they they, they are a founder of the largest church now it's called Bread of Life the the bishop is Joe Imakando he's respected he has, he has preached at T.D. Jacks and other places oh wow he's he's uh, his sons became my friends because they're the same age as me. Uh, I talked to him. I said uh, many questions like I asked him, how do you do this? How did you have all this? He says, I do exactly what you do. Love the Lord. Just keep loving the Lord. He said, don't do anything. Just love the Lord. Wow. So I started loving the Lord. <laughs> and the man started telling me, he said, you're going to be a very great man. I remember he could not allow anybody to drive me home. He drove me in his brand new Mercedes Benz to say, I want to drive you to your home. Then he started talking to me. He said, Gershom, God is going to use you. And I think you've got a gift. And you start practicing it in the small groups. See how it works. So I told his wife, um, I said, the pastor's wife, I told his wife, I said, I had this vision. She said, Gershom, let's go to church right now. We need to pray because I know you. I know you. Things are going to come to pass. I know you. it's going to wow. come to pass. So she we went to the it. church yep. and she told the whole church to pray about it. She was the only one that acknowledged me. Wow. She had about 2,000 members now that time, but now they are over 10,000 plus. She said, let's pray. We prayed again, Esther. And guess what? Within two weeks, soldiers tried to take over the water, the, the state house and tried to overthrow the president. Right, because you had that warning dream. Yeah. Yes, but they did not succeed. The soldiers were captured. Wow. Praise the Lord. Your prayers. So, so if we didn't pray, it would be a military country. That's awful. Gosh, it saved Zambia. Because Zambia is still a great country now, isn't it? Yes. And a democracy and a Christian country. Yes, it's a Christian country and a and democracy. Wow. But you, but you will love this. After the president that declared Zambia a Christian nation, he was out of power. We had another president called Levi Manawasa. He's gone to be with the Lord. Yeah. I actually wrote a song about him, which was famous in the whole entire country. Ah. Yeah. I, I wrote a song out of fun. Then it ended up becoming a hit for the country. You wrote, <laughs> oh, that is you so wrote cool. the song. Yes, I wrote a song. It, it is called Twalila. For the Zambians, we're going to watch. The song is called Twalila. You know, it, it became a hit. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, I like this president, but this president hated Christians. Right. He was a lawyer, but he didn't like Christianity. Mm. Um, he wanted to declare... Zambia as a secular country. Yes. I said no. I talked to pastors. You are just a kid. You are just a kid. You can't. I said no. God gave me wisdom. I said write an article. So I wrote an article. The importance of having peace. And the importance of inviting the prince of peace. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. I said Christianity is the only religion that does not discriminate other religions. Yeah. When wow. we when we look at other religions, they are very legalistic to themselves. But Christianity, you don't find Christians cutting somebody's herd. No. We we're not allowed to do that according no. to the Bible. Love, we your, allow, love your enemies. We yeah. love our enemies. Yeah. Even when they chop our heads, we love Even them. When they persecute you, pray for those who persecute you. So I wrote this article, addressed it to the president. And I went into the national newspaper 
I had a, this very nice suit that somebody bought me, very expensive suit. Somebody bought me in Botswana when I was preaching there. This lady said, the Lord told me to buy you the most expensive suit because I wasn't really dressing nice. <laughs> so I went into my nice suit, dressed up like a businessman, and I introduced myself that I'm a son of the politician. That Then I said, but I have this article. They said, we'll publish it. It will be on a Sunday time, you know, on the weekend when people are relaxing. So it was on the front page for the president. It came out and the president responded wow. to my article and he used the executive order to redeclare Zambia as a Christian nation. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Zambians don't even know about that, but they have written, they have read about the, the article, but I did not put my full name. I just said GS because I'm Gershom Sekala. Oh, yeah. As wow. it's signed by GS. Oh, hey, we are out of time. This but is amazing. Gershom, we are, this is part one. Everybody, just to let you know, this is only part There's one. There's so many things we haven't Gershom, covered. will you come back another time to oh, do Oh, I'll come back. I love you guys. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Hang on. We got up to basically finishing school. I think we've only got to the end of school. I know. So we haven't I'm, even <laughs> heard about how you got called to L.A. And Well, yes. so we, LA, we're going to yeah. save that for next time. Yes. But Gershom, thank you so much. It's been so encouraging do you just want to release a blessing over our listeners? I want you yeah. to make up your mind to love Jesus. Wow. Mm. It's not what you do. It's loving him, surrendering with wow. open heart, open mind. Just say, I love you, Lord. Mm. Use me, Lord. And then you will experience signs and wonders and miracles that will just follow you. Father, I thank you for people that are so hungry. Mm. Oh, God, for that holy hunger. Lord, I pray that ignite the anointing, ignite, give them the hunger like never before. And Lord, I pray mm -hmm. that, that the presence of the Lord will fill their homes and their cause. I pray that the Bible will become alive. That same hunger to read the word. Yes, and Lord, I pray that there will be healed, there will be, uh, there will be healings and signs and wonders. And I pray that, Lord, they shall have visitation. I, I believe yes. every person who's going to watch this, yes, they're going to experience the visitations of the Lord. Lord, Lord. I ask you that visit them, Lord, even now as they hear from mm. this voice that is anointed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray. I vow to give you all the glory and all the honor for every miracle, for every sign and wonders. Ooh. Oh God, let it be accredited to you. All glory and honor. Yes. Lord, I heal people with cancer, those people with broken relationships. Heal mm. them, Lord. In Jesus' name, I mm. sense the fire of God, mm. the heat of God's presence. It's just going through your bodies right now. Oh. Just say, Lord Jesus, I love you. That's all you need. Love him with all your heart, with all your soul, mm -hmm. and with all your strength. And you will see all these things shall follow you. Whoa. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Yes. So good. Oh, I just love you, man. And, yeah. and, uh, and Christian. And, Thank you, Gershaw. Oh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even know what I'm going to talk because... You know, something about the story of something that has affected you. Sometimes you don't even have to have a script because these are the real things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I haven't yeah. even talked about how Jesus visited me the second time. Oh, Oh, there's so many things. Come on, There come are on. so many things. That was so over, <clears throat> over nine people that were insane. You know those people that are crazy? In the, yeah, in the sanatoriums? They are like, in yes. Mental homes. Mental homes. And these people are like a garbage pickers. They, there is no cure for them. They came to no. my meeting. They all got healed. Oh, Jesus. Wow. After I had a visitation of Jesus. Whoa. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Visit your people. Yes. <laughs> I can feel him right now. <laughs> oh, God. Visit Whoa. your people. Wow. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We wow. need part two, maybe part three. Maybe yes. it's a whole series. Yes. It could be a whole series. But, yeah, yeah, it sounds Jesus. like it. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> wow. Zambia in California. Mm. The yes. series. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening today. Sorry to... um. 
got to pick up my boy from school, so we have to stop right here. Otherwise, <laughs> we can make this a two or three hour. I want to make this a three hour podcast. But yeah, we but, should. Um, yeah, but leave your comments below. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week and be encouraged, be blessed. And we're going to have more of Gershom very, yes. very soon. Until next time. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.org.